All right guys, so welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video, we're taking a look at a pair of gaming headsets that's probably one of the most requested gaming headsets I've seen on this channel. And so today we're looking at the Razer Nari Ultimate. Okay, so the first thing that you can see inside the box is this massive gaming headset. I mean, honestly, this thing is pretty big. It's exactly like the Nari wireless that I've already reviewed. Now these do retail for $200. Um, so they're $50 more than the Nari wireless, but you are getting the haptic feedback. So also in the box, you get a micro USB cable for charging. These are wireless, so you do have to make sure that they are charged, but they also have to be charged to use the haptic feedback as well. Now, Razer is calling it HyperSense technology um, that's made by the company Lofelt. Um, so it is something slightly different than the Crushers, but it's still kind of the same sensation. Now you're able to use this wirelessly um, and control it within Razer's app, but you also can use it wired, but at the same time, you still have to make sure that your headset is charged. Now on a full charge, you'll get roughly about eight hours of battery life, um, but that kind of depends on how much of the haptic feedback you're using. Also in the box is a braided cable, the same one that Razer usually gives you with the other headphones. Again, if you want to use it with mobile devices that have the headphone jack, or if you want to use it with the switch in mobile mode, you would use the headphone cable. Um, but other than that, you're able to use this on your PC, your PS4, your Xbox One, and the switch using the dongle. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the headset itself. Again, like I said, this thing is pretty massive, um, but it is extremely well built. Um, you can tell with the aluminum frame that they used up here. It has the suspension system so that when it's on your head, the headband just kind of expands depending on how large uh, your head is and how you need it. The design itself actually has a titanium look, which is different than the Nari wireless. It gives it more of a premium, uh, kind of looks like a stainless steel type look. I really like the look of these. Um, they do have the RGB lighting so that you can have it match up with other Razer um, accessories and peripherals that you might have. Also, these have the cooling ear pads. So when you put them on right off the bat, you can feel that cool sensation that they have that it's putting on here. Now the ear cups on here are huge. When they're on your head, they actually kind of go a little bit on your face. And what's cool about that to me anyway, some people might not like this, is the haptic feedback that it's doing the bass sensation. You actually can feel it in your face because of where the ear cups go. Again, the one thing I have to point out, I hate that companies do this is the wire inside the headband. Now I get it because it's wireless. You're having to run all of your wiring and stuff within the headphone itself, but the exposed cable means it can get pinched, it can get cut, it can get caught, and if anything breaks, they're just not gonna work. Again, Razer uses the mesh grill around the logo. Yeah, it kind of gives the appearance of these being open back, which obviously they're not. And as far as swiveling, they will swivel to lay flat, but they will not fold inward. Again, everything about these feel premium. As far as build quality goes, I honestly just see no reason to worry at all. So it kind of comes down to if the extra $50 is worth it to you to be able to feel the base in these headsets. The headband part itself, just a pleather type material. You can see razors embossed, but again, it has that dual aluminum frame around the top of it. Again, I do like the headband suspension design. I know some people don't, so it's a matter of preference, but Razer has been using this quite frequently on a lot of their newer headsets. So I think that's just the direction they're gonna go. So the wireless dongle that you have to use to be able to have these wireless is actually hidden into the headset itself. And it's actually really small. So it's not one of those huge, obnoxious looking dongles that's gonna stick out from your PC or your console. And that's hidden on your right ear cup on the bottom. And also on your right is the volume control, which is on the back end of the ear cup. Now everything else is on the left. You do have your headphone jack, you do have your micro USB input. Again, micro USB. I wish companies just would all go USB-C and then we can move past 
the micro USB. Uh, but then you also have your power button and then you have your game and chat control where you can kind of balance to hear how much of it you want. I don't do a lot of chatting so my volume for game is just usually turned all the way up. And then above that you have your mic mute button and on the front part of the left side is your retractable microphone. Razer's mics I usually find to be pretty decent. Um, this is bendable so you can get it positioned exactly where you want to on your mouth. Um, and if you do have the mic muted, the tip of this will be lit red. But speaking of the microphone, let's go ahead and do a mic test right here. All right, guys, so this is a mic test of the Razer Nari Ultimate. Again, this is a digital microphone, and with it being wireless, you can always kind of hear that digital compression. Um, it's always going to be there because it's not plugged straight into a device. So that is something to know. But the beauty of this is if I wanted to, I could just walk around the room like this talking to you guys and I don't really have to do anything. I mean, there's no cords in the way and I can just talk. So it probably wouldn't do the trick as far as streaming goes, but as far as just jumping online and playing with friends, this will more than do the trick. So now that we've gone over the design, we've gone over the mic, we really need to go ahead and just get right into sound. Because honestly, that is what makes these things special. That's what makes these things worth $200 because $200 puts it in competition with some pretty high-end gaming headsets. Now, before we get into the haptic feedback, let's go ahead and get into the sound. I think the sound, if you're not using the bass sensation, is right on with the Nari Wireless sounds very similar uh, which I felt that the mids and the treble was really strong again bass has its impact razors always known for bass so it has a slightly warm sound signature but the treble in these are actually pretty bright um, and again if you want you can go in razor software and EQ it and they have different presets built in but right out of the box I think it sounded great now I did play with the EQ a little bit raise the bass a tad but definitely raise my trebles more to spike to where like if your trebles are here it starts to kind of go down your mids are kind of in the middle and then your bass just slightly um, starts to point up so it's not anything it's just a typical U sound signature that's what I like um, but the ability to be able to change it within software and it saves it here so if you do it on your PC then you go plug it in your PS4 you know those settings are saved within the headsets you don't have to change it every time you go from one thing to the other the sound stage in these I think are amazing this has the THX spatial surround sound surround sound to me is gimmicky in headsets but when it's done right um, you can get the sensation to feel like things are spread out further around you um, and then you can kind of pinpoint where things are coming from. Now the THX that they use in here just like the Nari Wireless is very impressive um, as far as trying to give you that overall surround sound feel and that kind of goes into being able to use this with movies because movies with THX sound amazing um, and the fact that these have the cool technology you're able to wear them longer without them getting hot although over time they still do trap in heat and you can expect them to get hot if you're going to have them on for a long period of time. Everything's just exciting whenever you're using this this type of headphone. Now we're going to add in the fact that you have haptic feedback which means explosions and gunshots and that's with movies and games and then music as far as when bass hits or drums hit you feel it you feel it in your face you feel it in your neck you start to feel it a little bit in your spine I mean it's to me I think that the haptic sensation in here is actually stronger than it is in the Crusher 360s that's saying a lot the other thing that's nice to point out is the fact that it picks up starting at lower frequencies where the original crusher wireless um, didn't pick up a lot of lower frequencies so it kind of was hard to get it to sound like it was more natural now with these with them picking up at lower frequencies you start to feel it like let's say you're playing battlefield and let's say that at a tank when it's coming down the road and you feel that slight rumble that's what you feel in these. It's just, it's impressive. It's more immersive to me. I think when you can feel sound on top of being able to hear clarity, it just gives you this really nice feeling of atmosphere. And the space that the THX has given you is just, it's really impressive. But I do need to point out, if you move your head a lot, and I think it's because of the big size of the ear pads, and it doesn't have a whole lot of clamp, like it doesn't feel tight on my head, that it tends to kind of wiggle around and it'll move a little bit. 
So if you move your head a lot, you gotta, you kind of already have to know you have the possibility of these falling off your head. So guys, that right there is my review of the Razer Nari Ultimate. I've been waiting to get a hold of them and I was excited to get them out of the box. And to be honest, they just didn't let me down. Like from the second of listening to them, I knew like right when you turn the power on, you feel that slight little kick. It automatic, like right off the bat, the haptics turn on and you feel it just by hitting the power button. I highly recommend them at $200, and if the base haptic feedback is not a huge thing for you, you can save $50 just by going with the Razer Nari wireless, and you get incredible sound just minus the haptic feedback. All right, guys, so thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, guys, make sure to stay tuned for more.